the morning, as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, May no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. This is in Matthew 21, 18 through 19. For most Christians, this is one of the most perplexing moments of Jesus' final days. It seems arbitrary, reactionary, vengeful even. While Jesus does teach his disciples on a lesson on faith through this passage, most scholars agree that the fig tree is a picture of something much bigger. Now, a quick lesson on fig trees. Fig trees bear fruit first, and then the leaves appear, or both appear at the same time. And since this particular tree was in leaf, figs should have been on it. So when Jesus found none, he cursed the tree immediately, and it withered. When the fig has leaves, it's appealing to the eyes. But while this fig tree looked beautiful, it wasn't beneficial. It was actually a curse disguised as a blessing. And here's the parallel. The fig tree is a picture of Israel during Jesus' day. The nation of Israel claimed to be fruitful, but in reality was barren. The religious elite thought that they were a blessing to the nation, but instead exploited and manipulated the less, the less fortunate to line their own pockets. They played religious games, and their love for God was an outward show only. It looked nice on the outside, but on the inside, there was nothing but decay. Jesus, in fact, stated this directly. He says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. That's in Matthew 23, verse 27. Jesus later warned his disciples that the same subtle hypocrisy could creep into them. Jesus said to them, watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees in Matthew 16. Why would Jesus curse the fig tree? Why was he so harsh to the religious leaders of his day? Why does he warn his disciples about hypocrisy and what does it mean for us? Well, the fig tree was a perfect picture of Israel's hypocrisy. The religious elite, though seemingly devoted to God, were only devoted to themselves. He did not want his disciples to fall into the hypocritical trap that can so easily ensnare the human heart. And herein lies our lesson. Is your obedience to God out of genuine love or sheer obligation? Is your participation in the local church a moral mandate or something you truly desire? When you think of God, do you think, I better obey or else? Or do you think, God has been so good to me, I can't help but obey. Do you see the difference? Jesus is after our motives. On one hand, our motives can be completely like the Pharisees, like the fig tree. We may look good on the outside, but on the inside, we're bitter or resentful and a curse to the people closest to us. On the other hand, when we are abiding in Christ, when we are enjoying him, enthralled by his goodness to us, we're at peace at rest and a blessing to those around us. Today, may you be invigorated by Christ's love for you and as a result, be cured of hypocritical religiosity. May you be enthralled by God's goodness to you and be a blessing to those closest to you.